Must consult my notes first. Well, I'm the Naomi half of Clark and Naomi. I'm going to lead off, and Clarky's going to, or Clark is going to finish it. I can call him Clarky, you can. Um, so Clark and I have been attending this church for the last two years. Um, we both grew up in church. We both have been believers for a long time. Um, and since we began attending here, I would say we've been very challenged, which is wonderful. It's what you should be in your Christian walk, throughout your Christian walk. If you're not feeling challenged, I would say maybe there's something not right there. Um, but especially in the last year, God's really opened our eyes to a lot of things um, in our own hearts and in our own lives and um, kind of revealed to us what our desires really are. Um, our fleshly desires that we're putting a lot of uh, thought into, a lot of planning and energy, um, and and really calling out those desires in us um, as for what they are. And the big one that um, we've had for a long time, since before we were even married, is I mean we're an American couple. We want to buy a house, and so we want to put all our time and our energy into that and um, you know then this past fall Eric was talking up here <coughs> about how we, we don't own a church building that's something unique about us as a church and how he was talking about that it's it really enables us to be able to use our resources differently and our serving differently we're kind of I think the term was lean and mean um, and being able to be flexible that way. And I remember on the way home, Clark and I had a conversation that we, that felt so good in our soul, that idea that, you know, why do you have to own a church building if it means more of your resources go toward God? So that was the first little tickling. Um, and we read a book called Crazy Love, which I recommend, um, which is incredibly challenging. And one of the things it talked about, one of the themes of it was, you know, do we really, do we really desire God the most out of everything? Are we putting our research, are we putting our energy into desiring God? Um, and it just, bing, went up in my head, the house is an idol. It was. And I, I want to put out there that I don't think only houses is <coughs> sinful, but God called out in our heart as sinful. And this thing that we put up on a pedestal and we... We were not as generous as we could be with others because we wanted to save for this, or we were um, organizing our lives around this. Um, and I remember so I, I walked to and from work every day, which is a great time to pray. Um, and I remember when God first brought it up, it felt like, God, that can't be, that can't be right, that can't be what it is, right? Because that's, I mean, it's so ingrained in our culture, like that's, the American dream, right? But God never said that was his plan for us. And I remember praying, God, if this is really what you want us to do, to give up that that dream, that idol, tell Clark too. <laughs> Make him feel that way too, because um, you know, I, and, and he did. I remember Clark telling me one time he was in the woods thinking, should we, should we really be pursuing this? You might not remember that, but I remember <laughs> anyway, um, so God really pulled it, showed us that it was an idol, um, and the the parable that God had in the last year, so long before that, God had brought the parable of the sower to my mind a lot. In that, the good soil is the one that doesn't allow thorns to grow in it, and the, God showed me that the house was a thorn, it was an idol, it was an obstacle for generosity, and it was a focus puller doing all of these things and making it very difficult for his love, his, um, like for me to focus on him, for us to focus on him. So we gave it up. We put it on the altar to God. Um, so while we don't know what God will do, you know, if he decides to bless us with a house one day, that will be his decision. We're not going to gear our entire budget around trying to buy a house. We're not going to gear our energies over trying to make more so that we can get the house that we want. 
or that we wanted. And we had all kinds of plans, let me tell you. We talked about this a lot. There was, there was extensive dreaming done on this, but, um, but I know that it was God that allowed us to give that up because that's not a human thing. I mean, it was like a, like a security thing. Well, that house, you know. So that was in December that we gave that up. And since then, God has enhanced my prayer life like I, I could never have imagined. The, um, my desire to pray and the amount of time I spent in prayer has just expanded a lot. Um, I felt very strongly like I needed to be down at the Hope Center um, working there at least one day a week, but in order to do that, I had to give up my freelance design work, which I do. I did a fair amount, and in giving that up, that allowed a way for me to get more hours of my job that makes up for it on a different day, so that you know our, our needs are met. Um, and when things were really tough in February, I was praying a lot that God would help me to trust Him more. He did. Um, so He's been incredibly faithful in that. So I. I don't know where it goes exactly from there, but um, that's my half. Oh, wait, I want to read one thing. <coughs> sorry. Sorry. Um, sorry. I'm a bit all over the place. This is, um, I believe, a biblical decision, too, that God gave us. When Paul is writing to the Corinthians, he talks about, he's talking to them about that it's easier if you're not married to serve fully the kingdom, but. Um, what he says is 1 Corinthians 7, 29 through 32, beginning. What I mean, brothers, is that the time is short. From now on, those who have wives should live as if they had none. Those who mourn as if they did not. Those who are happy as if they were not. Those who buy something as if it were not theirs to keep. Those who use the things of this world as if not engrossed in them. For this world, in its present form, is passing away. I would like you to be free from concern. So following in that same vein, uh, or trying to, it certainly was not just uh, you know one thing that happened to us, and then all of a sudden we're uh, going to try to change our life. Um, for certainly we're more obstinate than that. Um, and so there were multiple things that happened. Certainly uh, messages from Eric, uh, reading Crazy Love, which I would call a very guilt-inducing book, um, for the most part in a good way. Um, Certainly in my life, my professional life, I was uh, doing work that um, I made numerous obvious and uh, very easy to correct mistakes. Uh, and they said, you know, we really don't need your work anymore. Uh, and that was, that was a huge blow to me professionally and financially because I was counting on this work. Um, and I really didn't know how I was going to make that up uh, financially. And so at this point, though, several months later, I don't feel that effect because just doing the accounting in my head, it appears that my year is mostly full. Um, and I can't account for that personally. Um, and I didn't really care for the work that I was doing anyway. So I don't miss it at all. Uh, and that's something I wouldn't have imagined myself saying five months ago. I was counting on that work uh, very much so. Um, We've had other things happen with our vehicle that my parents um, uh, gave up, they didn't give us any of theirs. They sold us theirs, which was a much better vehicle, and that was a huge uh, mental burden on us, this old vehicle we didn't want. Um, and we were able to give our old one away. Um, let me think. Uh, certainly our budget has changed since then. Um, how we look at it. I've always had held the view that I am just a temporary stopping point for money on its trail to somewhere else. Um, and I certainly still maintain that. However, I take uh, a much more um, responsible look at how much of that should I be giving to God? How much of it should I be giving back to him? Um, and certainly, uh, Crazy Love is one book that I would highly recommend, uh, not just simply because I think it's good or Eric thinks it's good, um, but because I think it definitely calls people um, closer to Christ. Uh, another book that we've recently read, and again it was recommended by Eric, 
And if you're thinking, well, it was recommended by Eric, it's going to mention basketball. <laughs> um, you're right, it does. Um, uh, but the book is one thing you can't do in heaven. And I would, combining that book with Crazy Love, Crazy Love seems to be very much the guilt-inducing book of why aren't you living your life right? Uh, one thing you can't be, one thing you can't do in heaven seems to be the solution to that. And you should be witnessing, you should be telling people about your faith. Um, because certainly the resurrection of Christ is something that uh, is open to all of us. And on the judgment day and the resurrection of the dead, there will be those that know him and those that don't. And you and I have a duty, a responsibility, to tell those that don't about Christ. Thank you guys very, very much.